No, Captain Luke. Your splendid service as an interpreter is appreciated. But when you try to tell me stories of mesmerism, occultism, men without souls, hordes of supermen capable of annihilating armies of tame men, you make me wonder which of us is sane. General, I, I dare say uh, I failed in my presentation of the facts. No, no, not facts, but the ravings of a mad Cambodian priest. No, Luke, it's too fantastic. Read that last. General Headquarters, Austrians bringing up veteran shock troops. One and moment. The... I wish I could believe in your robots. I could use several regiments of them right now. That's all. Yes, sir. You don't have to tell me you failed on one. I can read your emotions in your face just as easily as you read the dead leg you do. You can't find a language in which to convince General Duval. No, the chances are you apologized, stammered. He barked, and you retreated without firing a shot. I wish I had your assurance, faculty of knowing your objective and driving straight at it. Well, it's simple. Just impress the other fellow, you know more than he does. It has been called ego flip. Oh, yes, but I like the American phrase better. Intestinal fortitude. Don't rub it in. Well, someone should. You know, I admire your knowledge, and you envy my ego. Well, I'll take half your knowledge, and you take half my ego, and we'll have two smart men. <laughs> How much of this high priest story do you believe? Oh, I think there is such a thing as black magic. Call it superstition if you want. I don't know. But I don't believe that you can turn human beings into automatons, or as you call them, zombies. You believe in mental telepathy? Might be something to it. I don't know. Well, science does. It's an established fact, Cliff, that in the Orient, the last of an ancient race lives by the laws of telepathy. Their, their knowledge, their rituals, are, they're guarded by just such priests as this man, Peon. <laughs> All right, I'll buy your tribe of mental telegraphists, but I'll not buy your robot. Now, look, Cliff. Peon here comes from Angkor, where, according to their legends, Angkor was built by these robots. Thousands of tireless, feelingless human machines. Yes, yes, I know, and they call them zombies. Controlled and directed mentally by their priest king. Yes, and Peon here is a lad... Descendant of that priest king and the only man alive that knows the secret of the zombie. Tian. Bakan oi sava. Bakan an tian. Nya oi tang tang I don't believe a word of it. He says that he says that the general keeps his ears in the ground like 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 the ears of a corpse. <laughs> that he'll not listen to the words of wisdom. Well, what does he want to do? Get the general from the earphone? Ever pray until I. Patek Shang. Shang Vatoi Akwila. Tiang still insists his gods say he must create zombie soldiers. He says he'll show us how a handful of zombies can take an entire enemy trench. not here to plead the cause of the Central European power, but that of modern civilization. In the name of humanity, you must not go further with your experiment. It may mean the destruction of the white race. General Van Telling, the responsibility is not ours. It is that of a fanatical Oriental priest attached to our Cambodian contingent. We have already placed the man under arrest. His experiment ends with that. I thank you, sir. I shall be glad to return with that assurance.
Then we are agreed that since the priest, Tiong, refuses to reveal his secret, he is a menace so powerful that he must be confined where he never again can use his occult knowledge. Quite right, General. Right? I suppose so. I am in the car. Sir, your threat of life imprisonment apparently has not moved this man. He understands it means solitary confinement? Yes, sir, and he still refuses. Then inform him that we are forced to carry through the sentence of solitary confinement for life. Yes, sir. Here. Bakkan et toi va. He is to be confined to his quarters pending his removal to military prison. Yes, sir. On down. Gentlemen, the priest Tiang was murdered. Murdered by someone who did not want the Allies to benefit by his power to create robot soldiers. Or perhaps by someone who tried to take the secret from him to become the greatest force in the world. True. When dealing with these Orientals, you deal with fatalists. Death to them is a transition to a better life. Thoroughly understandable. His method of creating these, uh, these zombies must be on record somewhere. So I believe, sir. And it could only be in one of the temples of Angkor. Then we must find it. And when this war ends, our duties will not end with it. I make a suggestion. And ask that each of you bring it to the attention of your government. Urge them to sponsor jointly an expedition to the lost city of Angkor. And for general appearances, let it be a private expedition. Find the secret of the zombies. Destroy it. Then we If you'll permit me to say so, sir, I think we've accomplished a good deal. It took took years to make Angkor what she is. Certainly, we we, we can't expect her to divulge her secret to us in just a few months. Yes, but this all costs oh, money in that. Darling, Mr. Mack, how do you like me in this helmet? My dear Claire, I like you in anything. You're a galant. <laughs> I think I look awful in it. So do I. Now, Daddy, this is the time you're not to agree with me. Well... Maybe someday I'll say something that meets with your approval. I have promised myself that, darling. Um, uh, Mr. Luke, how do you like me in it? In what? This hat. Copper. This. I think you're beautiful. <laughs> you're more than gallant. I, I beg your pardon, Art. Oh, now you've spoiled it. Is this the discussion of business or are we playing charades? 
Proceed, gentlemen. I'll take the minutes to now, 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 Claire, now, here, I... Pardon. Am I intruding? Well, you're late. Sorry. I was busy. Oh, you were? Yes. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Monsieur Luke, no doubt, has represented me well, I trust. Well, he made some alibis for you. Hmm. That's very nice of him, I'm sure. But I have a habit of handling my own affairs. I'm looking things over today. Well, I'll be pleased to come to you. Hmm. Perhaps uh, Mademoiselle Duval will permit me to... Uh... Thank you, monsieur. I've made my arrangements. Monsieur Luke has consented to act as my guide. I see. In an hour, Monsieur Luke. Thank you, Mademoiselle Duval. <laughs> none, none whatever. So he promised to give up his power, release his subject, for this woman he loves. Now, oh, that's my idea of a man in love. <laughs> you believe the legend. Who made it up, old Ankavar or you? It's a true translation of the legend. Would you have given up all that power for Endra? I shall never have power, and I've never known love. <laughs> well, power's not so important. You are in love. In love with old stones and pieces of pottery. <laughs> well, perhaps you're lucky. Perhaps. Who's that? Oh, that, that, that's Cliff Grayson. He's one of our best men here. Uh -huh. I'm hungry. Let's go back to camp. All right, let's do. What did you say his name was? Jakob Arman. Oh, no, I mean him. Oh, oh Cliff Grayson. I thought for a while she was in love with you. I chose an imagination to do. I could have understood that. Why? You're so much more her kind. There goes that inferiority complex again. You know, someday I'm going to cure you with that. I hope you do. What was it you said once about if you want anything, ride rough shot over everything? Be ruthless. Forget all sentiment. Get to your objective, take it, and hold it. I wonder if I could do that. Uh, perhaps not. But the man that doesn't is a fool. Good night. No. Dance is centuries old, I expect. Yes, but the wiggle's always the same. <laughs> <laughs> That's the traditional wedding dance of the Khmers. Uh, you know, she had a nice... Uh, Father? ...understanding of the dance. <laughs> <laughs> now, Father, that girl is my discovery. This engagement party would not be complete without hearing from the lucky man. On your feet, lad. Let's see you rise to the occasion. Yeah. Yeah. I hardly know what to say. I suppose that no man hardly knows what to say in a situation like this, but well, I presume we, we, we all say mo just about the same thing, so as trite as it is, may I say, 
and the most fortunate man in the world. Bravo! Bravo! Bravo. I'm sorry. I, I must be overcome by Armand's emotion. <clears throat> well, I... I don't know what I'm supposed to say. What father does when he's giving up the only daughter he ever had. You couldn't say anything nicer than that, darling. I've said the right thing at last. I'm improving. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Grayson, you were about to say something. Were you not? No, General. Like you, I prefer to listen to you. Well, that's strange. I've never known you at a loss for words. I wish you all the happiness that you deserve. It's like putting a jigsaw puzzle together, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? Mm -hmm. I'm always wondering where the next piece goes. First thing we know, Claire, you'll be a puzzle jigger like us with a sieve and a shovel. <laughs> Who knows? I might be the one who finds the secret of hypnotizing subjects. I know certain people I'd use it on. You tell us if you find the secret? Oh, she'd have to. A woman isn't supposed to keep a secret, is she? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether Malatesta is. Painting this plot, or trying out next year's color scheme for gentlemen's hair. <laughs> oh! Grayson! I can't understand it. I examined those ropes myself only this morning. You think you're badly hurt? I don't know. I'm just numb. We'll get you to the hospital tent. One thing I've always admired about you was your honesty. The thing I've most admired about you was your loyalty to your work. And to your friend, Cliff Grayson. I've never had reason to question his loyalty either. Even now, he's an innocent victim, as I am. I loved him. And I loved you. So did she. But do you think he would ever have admitted it? Unless I... Unless had... you had used me to excite his jealousy. Exactly. I suppose in your mind you can justify that. A woman in love can justify anything. Be ruthless. Ride roughshod over everything. Forget all sentiment. Decide upon what you want and get it, no matter whom it hurts. I've been told that was the thing to do. And now I find it's a woman's code, too. Well, I, I still admire your honesty. Oh, I have a regret. I've hurt you. Well, you should have no regrets. If getting what you want is everything, there should be no regrets. Aren't you being a little ruthless now? No. I'm a man who loved you. Even now? Yes. I shall always love you. I have been made somewhat ridiculous, it's true, but still I love you. Oh, I'd much rather that you'd hate me. I wish I could. That would make things so easy. Had you done this to me, I should hate you. If for no other reason, because of pride. Where you are concerned, I have no pride.
I change you? Ambassador to the Khmer Kingdom of Angkor, you witnessed a strange ceremony. Witnessed a strange ceremony. Fools. Fools. Under our very noses. Zombie ceremony. And the secret does lie in Angkor. Luna, we're going back to Angkor. I want you to go with me. No, sir. You don't have to go to Angkor. Why not? Why not? Please. Please to hold very old religious uh, uh, custom because they're glad you all go away. Very dangerous to go back.
just like the picture. I can't translate that. Where's Luke? He's been absent now for two days without permission. And right in the middle of this important translation, <laughs> he disappears into thin air. None of you. Not one of you are able to offer an explanation. I have discipline in this organization if I have to send every one of you back to your own country. Well, here, Luke. Hmm. Where have you been? In Angkor. In Angkor. My who's leave? Did you absent yourself from your work? Well, I, I thought that you would be glad to know that... You, sir, Tom, you are incapable, Tom. Did I give you permission to go to Angkor for two days while your work here, insignificant as it is, waits while I wait? But, Dr. Travis, and I, I... I will not tolerate insubordination. When you signed with this expedition, you agreed to abide by its orders. Gee, Luke, you are dismissed. You will be provided with transportation back to France on the next steamer, leaving Sagan. But, Doctor... Good day, sir. Sit down. There. Boone are the white man's ways. Have ever been strange to you at least. To me, they are strange too. But I've discovered that that he who would succeed must disregard all sentiment, decide upon his objective and, and drive straight to it. Ruthless? Yes, but therein lies success. Una, I have discovered the secret formula of the great king of the committee. You are my first experiment. I succeed with you. I will have acquired a knowledge that will make me the most 
the most important man in the world. hand or foot, except as I will it? No, master. Can you think or speak, except as I command? No, master. Una, we're learning to be ruthless. Yes, master. Armand, you're a different man. There's no indecision in you these days, lad. You have an authority about you. It's quiet, but one senses it. Like a man who had suddenly found himself. It took me a long time to acquire it. I no longer question what I should do. I do what I want to do. That's fine. But there's always one danger of overdoing it. And that's worse than not doing it at all. McDonald's, you're the one man to whom I'm grateful. You're my friend. I always believed in you, lad. I know you did. If you hadn't said what you have, I wouldn't say this. I liked you for the way you stood on your feet when another man had the good luck that you deserved. It wasn't for me. That's the way to look at it. She's a grand girl, and he's a good lad. And we'll all be wishing him happiness in another two weeks. Two weeks. Monsieur Grayson, come here at once. Have I said anything I shouldn't, lad? appreciate the confidence you place in the servant. Isn't this rather an unexpected mission, considering the fact that your daughter and I are to be married in two weeks, and the trip to Estella will take six? 
I sympathize with you, Grayson. But our duties come first. You understand? Yes, sir. As your poet Bobby Burns has said, the best laid plans of mice and men gang after glade. Bonsoir, Monsieur. Dr. Faustus, with his alchemy, and the help of his satanic majesty, discovered the secret of renewed youth. Just what is the secret you found? I have not as yet been able to enlist the help of Satan, but perhaps you, with your recently acquired habits of appearing at inopportune moments, hold the power to uh, materialize the Prince of Darkness. In possession of the knowledge you hold, I should not need his help. You assume much, my dear Mazovia. I know much, my dear Luke. You should know, then, that I'm not easily fooled by your attempted subtlety. Any knowledge that I may possess shall be retained only by me. You see, I don't hold you to be a stupid man. You have need of me, my dear Luke. You are a clod. I, a man of imagination. You have stumbled upon this lost knowledge of the centuries. I have hesitated at nothing to gain it. Let me share your secret with you, and the world lies at our feet. In France, did uh, Theon, the high priest, share his knowledge with you? No. And uh, therefore he died. You killed him with the help of the goddess Siva. Ah, that you will not understand. This you may, the breaking of the scaffold, so well tested by MacDonald, the mysterious disappearance of Francois and Henri, the refusal of the natives to do any further work. Why? The expedition withdrew, did it not? I knew you would not give up. I hoped you would lead me to the secret. Tiang took this from the god of Siva, and I took it from him. I thought it was what we all thought. It was a clue, but not the right one. This I am right in. You have the secret of the zombies. Let me have it. You leave me no choice, my dear Mazovia. You show rare judgment. My dear Luke. The secret, the secret lies in placing the right hand. So, the symbol of the third eye of Siva. The summoning by will of one who is to be your executioner. His hands slowly steal about your throat. Great priest king Yakavarman used his subject, 
men like you to build the miracle city of Angkor. Perhaps under my control, you are scheduled for even greater things. Dr. Trevisan, I thank you for reinstating me. So kind. And you, my poor friends, for the unwilling contribution of your soul. You are giving me power to achieve the one thing I want. And I am so grateful. No doubt you would all tear me limb from limb should I ever relinquish this control. But that shall never be. I sensed the change in him when he sent me away. I'm right. That time Armand was away, he was in Angkor. He succeeded where we've all failed. He found the secret of the high priest and he has power. And both of us taught him the lesson of being ruthless. He knows what he wants, all right. It's you. But what will he do to you? He'll get me out of the way. Our only chance is to get away together and right now. Come on. Your father asked me to say that he wishes to see you at once. I trust you had a pleasant trip to, to, where was it? Oh yes, Ishtala, I believe. That trip couldn't possibly have been made at your suggestion, could it? My suggestion? What possible reason could I have had for that? Same reasons for all these changes that have been made since I was sent over for these men in your scheme to marry Claire. If anything or anyone gets in your way, ride rough shot over him. Isn't that your creed? Not creed. Just advice I gave to a friend. You also advise, forget sentiment. If you want a thing, go after it and get it. Isn't that it? You proved an apt pupil. I had a splendid teacher. And now I'm the one that stands in your way. You are. But I'm removing. Then if I marry you, you will send Cliff back to England. That is your offer, is it not? Not my offer. My promise. He goes unharmed. Unharmed? I want your word that you will not make him happy to your will as these others are. These, these... These followers, shall we say. He will not be harmed. I give you my word. I believe that you will keep it. Yes, I will. And I'll do more. I'll let you bid him goodbye. I would like to do that. You love him very much, don't you? I'm proven. It isn't easy to give up the one thing in the world one loves. No, it isn't. Is it? I, too, love only one thing in the world but cannot give it up. Our difference is, I haven't your courage. It was 
so much I wanted to say. Now there's so little to say. I've only felt like this once before. The first time I went up into the front line. I was afraid. It takes a brave man to say that. A brave man would never let you sacrifice yourself to save him. So there's no sacrifice? I love you. I shall always love you. We can't say goodbye. No. Just let me look. I'll miss my guide. Oh, we've got to keep our heads up. I'm going in now. It's still up. Ten minutes past five. From now on, I shall always talk time with the bunny. And mine will always be set eight hours later. Or the evening. An apt pupil. Your teacher commends you. At least I let her remember you as a man. If I'm not welcome, open the door again. Start me and I'll roll gently back to my room. <laughs> They'll never kill your spirit, MacDonald. It's all I have left, save my love for my friend. What's on your mind? That which is most difficult to do, and have it understood, give unwanted advice. That's true, Mac. But go ahead. You're the one man I'll listen to. Thanks. Well, what's it, what's it all about? You and yours. You've done a terrible thing to her. Is it so terrible to fight for and to get the one thing in this world you want? Not if you played a gentleman's game. I don't like sermons. Nor perhaps the truth? Perhaps not. I do. This power which you have, this obsession which drives you on will defeat you in the end, and it should. You fool yourself with the delusion that you can make this woman love you. You can't do it. No man should do what his sense of right tells him not to do, nor desire that which it forbids him to desire. When right ways disappear, one's person must vanish with one's principles. That was said by an ancient philosopher. And I hold these things to be true. Good night. Dearest, know that I love you. Loving each other, 
we are no farther apart than our thoughts could reach. Claire, I've just been told that my hope of having you care for me is disappeared. Would you say that? I married you. I kept my bargain. And I kept mine. For that, I'm grateful. Is that all I'm to ever have? Your gratitude? Yes. I envy Clifford. I'd give up everything I have if you could just find it in your heart to think kindly of me. You ask me to think kindly of you. You have control over my thinking. You've proved that with my father and others. You've made them subject to your will. I could never do that to you. I couldn't. If I give up this power, if I release these people, then I should really believe that you love me. I'll prove it. I give it up. How the great priest king Yaakov Varman lost his power, releasing his subjects. He was enamored of the fair Indra. He did try by sundry means to win her love. But she, as women will, could not care for him. So he willingly gave up his power for this woman he loved.
Hensley. Come on, Freddy. What's happened? Whom the gods destroy, they first make man. <laughs> 